Hey, it's JC1424 once again with Gran Turismo 4. And in this episode of our GT Mode playthrough, part 121, we're going to complete the final endurance event of the game, which is the Circuit de la Sarth 24 Hours 1. We already did two that doesn't have the chicanes. This one is going to have the chicanes. So obviously, you know, less laps. But last episode, we complete the final driving missions of the game, the one lap magic. And I basically cheesed Nurburgring, knowing that I could probably do it without cheesing it. Prize car for finishing the driving missions was Nissan R89C race car from, well, 1989. And they also gave us the Toyota 7 race car, which I have right here. And that was completing for like the, the first five of them. That There was basically 10 one lap magic challenges. I forgot they even did that. But of course, you already know what car we're going to use in this Sarth 24 hour race. We're gonna hop back into the Pescarolo Courage C60 race car. I don't know what else is in the name, but it's just beautiful fluorescent green and this this deep blue, really cool paint job with all the logos you could possibly imagine on it. And going into this race, we're at 98.8% game completion. I guess we'll get to 99 doing this, or maybe 98.9%. Freaking knows how they math this shit out. Before we go there, I got a comment from a guy on the first 24 hour race at Circuit de la Sarth. And he said the reason that the car likes to drive itself off the track at some points is because of rigidity. Rigiding ring and ding. Rigidity. Now I gotta buy this thing to, to increase rigidity. And then it won't do that. We'll find out if that's even true. Just for 30,000 credits. So apparently this is just a process, not something that you, you buy and put on the car. Well, that's taken care of. And then there's no, like, weight loss. I think you can increase, like, the, the turbo. How much horsepower can this thing have? Uh, 995. What's weird is whenever you buy this thing, I think it says it has, like, 590 horsepower. But then after you get it, it has 840. They like to hide shit. It's like they put on the market and say, this is how much it's got, but it actually has this. And you don't find out until you get it. So it's going to be really difficult to get A-spec points from this race. I found this out whenever I was trying to get a little practice so I wouldn't spend too much time grinding the stupidity and finding out what tires I can use, what cars I can race against. And then I realized I can race against all of them. Most of the cars that show up to this freaking race, they won't give me A-spec points for. But yeah, it's 1.2 million credits. Once we complete this, we'll be all out of endurance events, all out of extreme events, professional events, beginner events, European events, American events, Japanese events, license tests, driving missions, special condition events, like everything's just freaking gone. Okay, I'm probably just going to go ahead and stop recording. Okay, there it is. I think the best lineup I could possibly get that will reward us a spec points for doing this race. You see the chicanes in the background. Now, I need to go back to settings. I just went there so I could sync up the video. But I'm going to put on super hard tires because this car can handle those. And I want to be able to make it as far as possible. I get high aspect points with the harder the tires are, but I can probably like change what tires I'm using in the middle of the race and still keep those aspect points. Also, see at the, the bottom left, it says stiffness now because we have stiffness in the car. That will now be in there forever. You, you cannot remove that as far as I'm concerned. But yeah, the lineup. We got the R92 and the R89 starting up front. The Sauber Mercedes C9 race car. The Toyota GT1 race car is a total fucking piece of crap. It drags down the A-spec rating. And then there's the Mazda 787B, which that is an actual competent car. So I didn't think that this Courage C60 was like all that freaking great. But it gets the job done. For some reason, like, I, I just can't get them 
to give me like something in the hundreds as far as a spec points go. But uh, yeah, this this is the big one, the beginning of the big one. I'm gonna be stuck recording this freaking race and just doing it in general for like three days. And I, I could have had it done in, in two if I did it over like my weekend break from work. No, oh, and you see, you got the jets taken off. I tried to shift, but the freaking button was jammed and all awkward. Yeah, I need to stop using this controller so much. I don't know what it is, but this start of the race is just terrible. Okay, there we go. The visibility is just cut down. Like, they couldn't handle putting the jets on my screen, but they did. And they got all ugly. So we're going to pass the Mazda 787, who's stuck behind this freaking garbage car. It was one of the best ones in Gran Turismo 3, but now you got all these other better cars, and now it's not. Man, they they don't want to put the Minolta in this race. I don't know why. Like, I tried and tried for, like, 30 minutes to an hour just loading it over and over and over again, and they never put the Toyota Minolta in here. They never put the Jaguar XJR9. There's a lot of cars that can give you good A-spec points, and they just wouldn't put them in here. Okay. Going into these chicanes for the first time. Oh. See, me talking and driving is kind of distracting. There's, there's gnats flying around. I don't know where the hell they're coming from. They find their way into the air conditioner, fly through the air conditioner, and then come and attack me. But, uh, you know, we'll catch up with these guys over here. Put it down to third gear. Ugh. I got it in second. It just won't turn. I got all this freaking practice for this race, and now that I'm driving and talking, it doesn't matter. Back, back to sucking again. But I will catch these guys eventually. Pass them. Go into the sweaty sweat mode. And I will take the lead. Lead the way to the end. Just having a really freaking hard time getting through the gears. Because uh, I'm not used to it. I mean, I got used to it, and I learned how the car drove, and well, it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm right back to not being used to it anymore. I've got the 787B all of my bumper. I mean, if you can call what this car has a bumper. Ugh, so tight. We're on these cold tires. It also doesn't help that I can't hear the car whenever I'm talking. Oh my god! It's gonna take freaking forever, but you know, this is our first lap of the race. It's just strange. You know, within about two laps, whenever I was practicing, I could get to the lead with the same damn lineup, but now I'm just, I can't do it with the talking shit going on. You know, something that uh, Kamikaze uh, noted in the comments of the first race here was that there's no day-to-night transition. Why? I don't know. They could have day-to-night transition in a game like this. But with everything else they already got going on visually, I, I guess it would be too difficult. The thing is that, like, what, NASCAR 2000 had day-to-night transition? <laughs> so, I mean, I figure they could try a little something here. There's just so much other crap going on visually and stuff to adjust with, like, lights and and they would have to ha have lights on the car come on and then just complete and total lighting changes. They don't have much night races as it is in here. And of course I'm getting wrecked. You couldn't just let me go. Yeah, I'm going to be stuck um, trying to find my way to the lead for a long, long time. That's freaking reason number 629 that this game just needs to end. Because the AI refused to leave me alone and let me go and respect my place on the goddamn track. Leave me alone, you fucking cut ass bitch fucking whore! What a sorry ass excuse for a racing game. What racing? Like, they don't want to race. They want to kill. They want to fucking manslaughter. And I went ahead and passed him. Gave him the draft. 
You know, she would, he would pass me back so that I could use his strap. But he does not understand the concept of passing. Okay, well done. Well done, Padawan. Okay, he went really wide right there, but I'm not sure why. I mean, I, we are catching the R92 while also struggling to pass this guy. I mean, maybe he's actually faster than them, and he just... He needs help. So we're like, they all have the same damn pace, despite having, like, completely different cars. Okay. Took the lead. I kind of need to block him, even though there's a section of the track coming up where I absolutely suck no matter what, because the corner sucks, and they're actually good at it. I'm sorry to notice, it doesn't seem to matter how I take this, uh this tight right turn up ahead that I always seem to just lose a ton of time in it. There we go. Kept it in second. Well, second position at least, not second gear. This godforsaken turn. And he's still right there. He didn't get like a better runoff or anything, but... He's going to have my draft. He's going to be all my bumper. And he's going to want to run me over in this curve up ahead, like always. I like when the AI check up, which is rarely. I think he just did. He just lost so much damn time in that one section of the freaking track. Ugh! These super hard tires are so freaking tight. We're coming up on pit stops. Which, yeah, there, there goes the R92 down pit road. I'm not going to right now. We're finally going to take the lead. The sad part is that that could have happened like five laps ago. Maybe six laps ago. Okay. So, I'm on E. Maybe... I should have not gone nine laps. I think we're going to actually run out of fuel before I can even take my first pit stop. Me wandering around for a bit. I should only go eight laps. Darn. Any second now. I don't know how long the E lasts. If I can make it all the way, that's fine. I expected like right here. Um, hello, gonna run out of gas, it's, it's not, what the fuck, I made it all the way on, on nine laps, yeah, that's, that's good enough, um, I'm gonna try using both hard front and rear tires, although the, the rear super hard tires, that they did, uh, start getting into the yellow, but they didn't actually enter full yellow phase. I think like, yeah, just the R92 pit at the end of lap seven. And then everyone else went pit at the end of lap eight, as far as I'm concerned. The freaking Toyota GT1 is so far behind. You see him. Just came off the straight with the chicanes. He's heading into the latter portion of the track. Of course, I know we're still going to have the lead on every clock pit road. I don't know how my lead is going to be this damn big. What the fuck? I mean, I hadn't even taken the lead yet before our, our 92 pit. And somehow I'm still like 20 seconds ahead. Dang. I was booking it whenever I took the lead. I think I've always been booking it. Just being held up trying to pass cars. Well, as I'm running the final lap of my second run, I'm laughing to Toyota GT1. I told you that car is fucking garbage. But, uh, yeah, as I wanted to test, using hard tires front and back, they take me all the way to the end of the fuel run. And just as I do that, start to enter that slightly orange phase of wear. Um... I think eventually the 787B is going to move into second because he did that after the R92 pit. 
So, I mean, if, if the 797B always pits later on, then I guess eventually he's going to claim that position for sure. Now, I think the Sauber and the R89 battle for fourth. <laughs> because you got, like, these two groups over there, and you got this, this other group of two over here. And I think the Toyota GT1 just got back onto the lead lap. I'm going to go take that away from him real soon.
six hours into this 24-hour race. That is one-fourth of the race completed. A quarter! I was going to say that it hasn't been very eventful so far. And then a bunch of stupid shit that I can't comprehend started to occur. Take this second chicane one last time. And I am going to go sleep because it is morning time. And I, I sleep during day because owls and nocturnalness, I don't fucking know. Good morning, afternoon, something. Mm. I'm, I'm going to turn a stupid light on. I don't want to turn a stupid light on. The room will be bright. You don't need to be bright. I can record that long. I'm gonna continue the race. I got like a little over eight hours till I have to go to work, so I'll just do eight hours more of the race. So I got a two lap lead and I'm about to go Ow. About to go into this corner. And th this is how the car drives. So I'm waking up, waking up. Stupid son.
I've lost like at least two and a half minutes from this car wrecking just because it wants to drive itself off the track and kill me. It can't go in a straight line. The comment section guy from the last Circuit to Lost Stars 24 hour race, he said to increase the ring of dingy or whatever. I did that. Well, lo and behold, nine hours into the race, as seen on lap 175, 185, 211, and many other occasions I'm not even going to bother showing you because you get the point by then. Yeah, the, the car can't go straight. It, it just takes off. Uh, I think there's one other occasion I want to show you, but like, I probably didn't remember what lap. I did set it the fastest lap on 215. I don't know if I ever beat that because it's actually hard to beat my track records here. It's, I'm, it's so hard to not fuck up now. And maybe it lasted longer? I don't know. But still, what am I supposed to do with all the other 13 hours of the race? Well, I should not be pausing it going into a braking zone. I should do it after the braking zone. I'm going to pause the same damn place as last time. But I've got chicken nuggets in the oven. And I've got work in, uh, I think like four minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got work in three minutes. And I live three minutes away. But it's all good. So, I, I'm hungry, and I'll finish this tomorrow, hopefully. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna run the last 10 hours of this race and I decided to only sleep 5 hours so I could fit it in my 
math is correct, I should have like 13 minutes to spare. Okay, I'm, I'm ready for this. Um, the weird steery thing, not so much. Yep, yeah. yeah, there's that. You keep in mind, whenever I started this race, I, I just went into that corner and took it fine with these. Now I can't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's a sixth gear, JC. There's a sixth gear in all these cars. I can't think of one without one. Oh my god, it, it, it won't stop turning. It won't stop turning. I increased the ring dong at you, and it can't stop turning. I should stop talking. That way I can get through all the gears appropriately. I I'm doing okay right now. You know, for someone who just woke up, I don't sound like I just woke up. Or maybe I do. What do you think? Shut up. Through all the nonsense, all the bullshit of this car throwing itself off the track, just like it did last time we had to, to do this race, kind of, I don't know. It was still a little bit easier than doing with the, the Peugeot 905, despite this having chicanes and that one just goes straight. So that's the thing. Well, the car does this, it doesn't want to go straight. It just slowly, progressively gets to a point where it can't do that. It's like, I, I gotta steer in little increments because the, the track is not perfectly straight. I gotta keep it on the line and the car just goes all over the goddamn place. I wanna steer a little bit and then I do and then it doesn't stop. So yeah, the oil light went on, I guess at the beginning of lap 410. I honestly didn't think that would happen because we'd be running so many less laps here and I did get this in oil change uh, before we did this race because I think that's how we ended off the uh, World Circuit Tour or whatever. At least I think that's what happened. I mean, yeah, you saw the disaster that was lap 256 all over and then I guess like lap... 331, I finally put the the Sauber Mercedes C9 six laps down, and then I proceeded to struggle to keep that. But now he's seven laps down, of course, because things occur, time goes by. But uh, what, a, what a monumental event in the game, the last endurance event, the last of the 24-hour races. Usually people end their Let's Plays with this, but this fucking sucks. It's been miserable, and also rather uneventful. I didn't miss pit road again. Well, I hit a fucking tire barrier. Hopefully I can find that and put it in netting. Ugh, increase rigidity. More like increase my misery. So one more measly chicane. Don't you glitch out, you better play that fucking music. All right, and they gave me 75 base spec points, despite the fact that I forgot to put back on the super hard tires. My hands have been sweating for 10 hours.
A lot of strange things occurred whenever I finished this race, or in the time I decided to. Kamikaze started a NASCAR Thunder 2003 Let's Play on the PlayStation 1, and NASCAR 22 is cancelled. Kind of. Not really. I already have that car. Well, now I've got two of them. I've got to get this car washed and give it an oil change so it's all fresh and nice again, but I really don't have time for that at the moment. I've got to be at work in a few minutes. I, I lost sleep and I crunched in before work. This, this final 10 hours of the race. I wish I had organized it differently, but we have a lot of money right now. Of course we do. And it saved the game. So that's that. We're at 98.9% .9 game completion. I'll see you guys tomorrow for the finale. See you next time. That's that and episode over.